person. <laughs> I'm the worst interviewer ever. We're doing a new series. It's called 15 Minutes With. Start. We literally can only talk for 15 minutes. Got it. And when it goes ding, we just say goodbye. Okay. So this is Susan B. Anderson. <laughs> Do you always go by the B? No, I in fact don't go by the B in my real life. Yeah. Um, when I um, published my first book, my publisher um, added the B, mm -hmm. and um, I kind of thought it was a little funny because it sounds like Susan B. Anthony, Ooh, and I get that, funny. I get it all the time, <laughs> and which is totally fine. I'm fine with that, That's but still. they loved it, and then it just kind of stuck. Yeah. So now in the knitting world, I'm always just Susan B. Susan Anderson. B. Yeah. It's a real common name, Susan and yeah. Anderson, mm -hmm. and especially in my generation. Yeah. So. I was Christy Anderson for seven years. See, there you go. Yeah. And it, um, when you go to um, the doctor's office or something, there's like 8 million Andersons, yes. and you have to. Ian Owen. Right. Are you Owen? I'm Owen. I was Owen also, <laughs> meant to be. So I have known about you since I heard you on the Woolful podcast. Oh, okay. And thank you for giving me 15 minutes of your time because you have been teaching at Both Any Live all weekend. Yes. What have you been teaching? So today I taught um, my Mary Millie and Morgan dolls, which is a lot of toy technique. And then this afternoon I taught um, shawl shapes and um, shawl design. So the students get 10 formulas to start their own shawls, like all different shapes of formulas that will work. And then we just kind of work through it together and they're all running off now, hopefully, to design their own shawls. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. I've been studying some of your shawls because I have a Wowza skein from Miss Babs, and you have like a series of yeah. shawls for her Wowza. Yes, it's Yowza. Did I say Wowza? <laughs> That's actually cute, but it, I'm so glad you corrected me. Yowza. Yeah, Yowza with so a Wow. <laughs> I like Wowza too. That's fine. Yowza. Okay. If anyone's was looking for it, though, that's what I thought I'd better say. <laughs> so embarrassing. That's okay. okay. Yowza. Talk about the toys because you have, I mean, just give me bullet points of how you got into all of this. Because I know you were a mom. Yeah. And just tell us the, the so, short version of the story. Sure. And, um, well, so what, what happened was um, when I was a teenager, an older teenager, I just I had this urge to knit. I was a crafty kid. And so I taught myself to knit. Um, during my breaks on my summer job one summer and I just loved it and I stuck with it and I've never stopped since so I've been doing a very very long time decades and um, I was a teacher a public school teacher and I um, would knit at night like crazy and then I started having my own kids I have four kids um, I retired wait, from wait, teaching wait, just, just one second let's just hold hands for a minute I can do this I can I also do that. this <laughs> I love my kids. Yeah, okay. and then um, and then I stopped teaching in the public schools, and I just um, started designing. And I started designing baby hats, and then that kind of grew into a whole thing. And I got a book deal in 2004, um, and I my first book came out, Itty Bitty Hats, in 2006. And then um, I just have gone on from there. So I have six kind of traditionally published books through my publisher, Artisan Books, who's here in New York City and who I love very much. And then I have, um, I've done, you know, all sorts of things, magazine work and my own um, pattern lines and all sorts of fun stuff. It's like so. a second career. Oh, it totally was. And um, I literally had no intention of having right. another career after I retired from You're teaching. Like, uh, I retired. I just wanted to be a mom. That's really, uh, that's all I've ever really wanted to do. Yeah. So this is all just kind of icing on the cake. I, you know, no plans for it. Was it hard, hard to manage? Because you have any children at home still? Um, my, well, my youngest is in college. She's, I live in Madison, Wisconsin. She goes to the UW Madison, so she's home all the time. Mm -hmm. But they're all out of high school right. at this point. I, my oldest son's married. My, you know, but I, I do have three kids in college right now. Oh my gosh. So I do still have to work really hard. Yeah, because we're supporting those kids. <laughs> get them through. But my question is, was it hard to balance? Because if you, if you only, not only, but if you just really wanted to be a mom, yeah. and that was your calling, yeah. Did, how did this interfere and how did you make that happen? Were you willing to make it happen? Because it's a sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, I was totally, obviously I was totally willing to make it happen. But, um, you know, uh, 
It, it is hard. It's very hard. Like I wrote my first book on our family computer with four kids and a husband. We all use the same computer. Yeah, Apple II GS. Yeah, and I had to sit there and like you know find some time, like squeeze in some time when I could use it. And when the kids are, or my husband wasn't using it too. And um, you know I travel a lot. Yeah. And um, even after my first book was published, I went on a big book tour. That was a long time ago. And they used to do big book tours, yeah, so yeah. I did like I don't even know how many cities I went to, but. You know, I had family to support me and take care of my kids when I wasn't there, and without that, I, I don't think I probably could have done it mm -hmm. quite the same way. I probably mm -hmm. still could have done some things, but probably not all all the stuff that I've been able to do. So, but that's been really nice. But um, it is a sacrifice, and I'm I'm not going to say it's easy. I'll wake up at like 4 a.m. to get my work in before you know my especially when they were younger, the kids would get up. I I put in like a good half day of work before anybody even got up. Amazing. I mean that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's sacrifice, it's dedication, and um, just really kind of determination. And mm -hmm. um, I get such joy out of it mm -hmm. that it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, I agree. I really love being a mom and I have no regrets about having three kids. I actually, yeah, I just, I went for a fourth, it didn't happen, but like, I was like, you like, I wanted the kids yeah. and I, but I have to have my own thing and yeah. I find it brings me a lot of joy too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me check how many minutes we have left. We have, um, Oh shoot, we have nine minutes. Oh, you we're want to talk good. about toys? Yeah, let's talk about what you have. Cause sure. Are, well, first of all, I wanted to tell you a fun fact. I was looking at your Sven and Solvig. Um, oh yeah. Okay, so that's I, not my pattern. Oh, but you were giving a video about it. Yes. So thank you for clarifying. She's so good at that. Well, her name, I want to give credit. This, yeah. Her name's Carol Anderson. The, um, I wish I had with me, but the Sven and Solvig dolls. Can I have a photo? I'll put a of photo course, right here. Of okay. course, of right course. Yeah, here. I mean, they're in my hotel room right now, so oh, I'm yeah. sorry they're not no, here. Okay. But um, yeah, her name's Carol Anderson. She's from Wisconsin, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and she is 80, in her 80s right now. Wow. And she designed these in the 1980s, these dolls, and they've kind of had this rebirth yeah. um, of, well, I knit them, and then before I did Lori times five on Instagram, she's one of my favorites, and you should follow. Follow her, okay. Lori times five, L O R I times five, and um, she's amazing. But she knit them. I thought, oh, I totally have to knit these. And now we've developed kids through my yarn company. Yeah, for them. Okay, yeah. But so you, anyway. we have videos, and I just yeah. want to say I know someone named Solvik. Oh, you do? Yeah, I don't know her well, but like her mom. She had, she's a Norwegian, mm -hmm. and so she gave her baby that name, and I was like, Oh, that's so cute. I know that name! Oh, that's so cute. Okay, so let's talk about the kitties. Oh, well, yeah. do you want to talk about the wool company and the kids first? Well, sure. Yeah, I, so I started up a company with my son. Yeah. Um, it's just been a little over a year. And that's all? I thought it was a little over a year. No, than that. oh no, it's just okay, a year. Okay, talk about that, talk about that. So we've, been, we've worked on it for about three years before we opened, um, and it has been fantastic, and we are having so much fun. Um, we have our own yarns, they're all American wools. Um, some of them are milled and from Midwestern farms right yes. in Wisconsin. And then we have another line that is um, milled at some different mills and then it's dyed in Maine at the, um, well they're calling it the Maine Dye House now, West Saco River Dye House, but now it's the Maine Dye House. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a huge adventure and the one thing that has just kind of blown us out of the water is people like to buy a lot of yarn. just by itself, but if you have a kit, people yes. go crazy. <laughs> yes. So it's so funny. And my projects, the toys that I do are the little, the fun hats, or I like to do a lot of color work, lend themselves so nicely to kits. Mm -hmm. So um, for example, yes. this kit, I just did um, these little kittens <gasps> for- Most adorable. Um, Who are these for? This were for the Making Magazine number four. It's the Carrie Bostic Hogue magazine. It's Making Magazine, and it's so wonderful. And um, I've done um, a, pro a toy project for each one now. And these, this is the Sleepy Kitten set. And the, they, have a little, they have a little something in their bums. Is it on? Um, oh yeah, I did. I put the Polly pellets. Yeah, Polly yeah. pellets. So they would sit nicely. Susan yeah. B. Anderson, what a good idea. Okay, keep talking. I interrupted you, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm really good at doing that. So this one just came out, <clears throat> and that magazine just came out. So I don't have the individual pattern yet, but it's available in the magazine, of course, and it always will be. And these also have some little sleeping bags. So here, I'll in. put one in, you put one in. And then they Look can go night-night together. Stop. And you know how little kids like to put everything to bed? Yes. So we have the little beds and all the instructions for making things. I love um, The sleeping bags are, are um, in the pattern. And anyway, we came out with kits for these. And now we, I had um, a lovely sewer who was a student in my class. She sewed the, a bunch of the sleeping bags. So we're actually selling those. 
Like um, you can get that with the kit. Yeah. A little, yeah, already a little sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. Yeah. Because not everyone crosses over. No. Oh, excuse me. Um, because not everybody crosses over into other crafts. No, right. But, but or you could just use your own fabric too. You so. could do this. You could. That's you easy. knitters could do this. It's very FYI. Easy. So anyway, it's been a lot of fun, and um, so this uses our, our Wisconsin wool and spun yarn. Yeah, the little kittens. It's very, so. it's very like wooly. Yeah. Jinx. So <laughs> Barrett. Why is it called Barrett? Oh, the B is for Barrett. B is for Barrett. It's so slow. So is that your maiden name, or you're like Millie? Yeah, and I kind of miss it. I love it. So yes. I'm bringing it back. I love that you <laughs> yeah. miss it and then yeah. you made it. Yeah. I miss Barrett too. Barrett's better than I understand. No offense, it's husband. Good. <laughs> no offense. It's just not quite as common. It's not quite as common. Okay, you still have to spell it out. So. What is it like working with your son? Oh, we're, we get along wonderfully and we have a mix of skills that um, really coordinate well together. He has a business degree, an accounting um, degree, and um, that's kind of his whole thing, but he's also has a real creative side as well. So he does all kinds of things, graphic design, photography, you know, all sorts of stuff. And then, um, and then I'm just having a ball. I'm just yeah, designing, just like, I'm getting other people to design with our yarns. Yeah, I noticed you collaborate I have, well, I have, and I want to do more. It's just, we're working really hard and super long hours and it's kind of hard to get out from under that sometimes, but you know, that's all good because well, we're, we're because doing well. Yeah, because so. you're doing your own thing and then other people are calling upon you. So it's probably mm -hmm. hard to sift through it all. It's fun, all of it. Now, I don't complain about any of it. Do you so. have grandkids yet? Oh, no. Okay. So, my son just got married a year ago. Okay. Um, he's 26. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then my youngest is 18. Yeah, yeah. So I was just wondering where does the inclination or the compulsion to do toys come from? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I have always loved little things, like just little cute things as an adult mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as a child, and I just love it. And I um, have I have such a fascination too with children's literature, and yeah. really my dream, one of my dreams is I want, I would love to have a children's literature book. Yes. It's still back there. Do you think I'll get it in? Yes, I don't know. I do. Yes, I do. Comment <laughs> will, below. Will I ever get that dream to come true? I hope so. But, you know, I love um, children's illustrations. Yeah. I'm just completely absorbed and so inspired by um, all kinds of um, artwork. And I just have a fascination for little three-dimensional things. Mm -hmm. And I really don't have any other great explanation for mm -hmm. it. And I seem to have a knack for creating them. You do you have. Know? I see. Did you hear yeah. what she said? I seem to have a knack. Um, you're an expert. You're an well, expert. I mean, she's yeah. humble. Susan Humble them. Anderson. And I love them. Talk about Mason Dixon knitting bracketology. You won. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I haven't thought about that for a long time. Wasn't well, that so smart? It was this. It Are you just such a, it all? Um, well, you knew about the family. Right? Yes. Oh, yeah, totally. you knew about the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not such a huge sports fan, right, but, but you knew the brackets. And so, they, yeah, they're so clever. So they, tell me, what was that like for you? It was really a huge honor. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> Those <laughs> little I, hens just kept moving to the final four. I never thought they were sheep. Oh, sheep. I never <laughs> thought. <laughs> No, I do have three French hens. I do have three. <laughs> I'm the worst interviewer ever. It was the sheep pattern. But oh I'll tell gosh. you, who so would bad. ever have thought? Well, you know, it's there like, was a like, competition. Oh my god. And the and garments. I mean, and then these little sheep, like, we won! It was just, it was really fun. It was very sweet. It was very, awesome. very, 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 um, it was a very nice pat on the back and very complimentary and I loved it. But it's the same thing like if I see a knit toy, not mine or anybody's knit toy, like up in the top patterns on Ravelry, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yes, yes. I just love it. Okay. Yeah, so, so that was really funny. Yeah, I haven't thought about that. I know, I loved that. Well, I oh, just, are they doing it again? I don't know, probably. I, mm, they we'll should. See. Maybe you'll win this year. I highly, highly doubt that. <laughs> but you know, the kitty. <laughs> My friends yeah. used bracketology to name their children. And oh. so they would like, the husband and the yeah. wife nominated all these names, and, they and then they would have little competitions. Wow. So funny. Okay, let's see how many minutes we have left. 55 seconds. Okay. Why do you knit? Oh, I knit because it's interesting. It, um, it absorbs me in a way that nothing else does. Um, I knit just for pure pleasure, not only work. It's my hobby. It's every, you know, my life that I just love to do. Um, it's helped me through difficult times. I've knit through hospital stays with family members. I mean, it's just 
a wonderful creative outlet, and I, I love it. Susan B. Anderson, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Susan B. Anderson. You're so funny. Okay, look, we're going to have this alarm go off. It's going to be so good. Look, we had 16 seconds left. 15. Oh, wait, hold on. Focus. 10, 9, 8, where's the kitty? 7, oh. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, kitty out, kitty out, kitty out.